Well, hello and welcome back to my sewing room. Today is Friday, March 18th, 2022, and this is episode number two in my Remix mini-series using my So Simple Shapes. And so last month I introduced you to this um, mini-series and we're going to be doing it for 10 months, so nine more months until November, and we're going to be doing two blocks every month. And so I also, last, so last month I introduced you to making the background and then making the stars and we did block number one. And then block number two. Okay, so basically we're making six inch blocks for the inside of a 12 inch star. And so if you need to know how to make those stars, refer to episode number one. And of course I will, you know, be linking that. Here. And if you need reference on making the backgrounds and preparing the backgrounds for each block, I also have that in episode number one. So then from here on out, I'll just be showing you, you know, the two new blocks each time. And also I wanted to let you know about the background. So I have these squares here that I showed you last time. We're just using four and a half inch squares, but I had a few questions um, about my stems that I have prepared and put on the spool that I talked about last month. And so this is my B cross stitch fabric and I do have several different greens in here. And so I just want to let you know that it's this green right here, which is called Riley green right here that I'm using. But you know, you could use any of these that you wanted to, but these little swatch cards that um, Riley Blake does is uh, super awesome for the basics so that you can kind of pick those colors out. So I wanted to answer that question and we'll work on that background when we go lay out the blocks. But let me show you the actual blocks that we're doing today. So this is block number three and this is block number four. So now these two blocks, the set that we're using this month is Bloom. Last month we did Autumn Love, and this month is Bloom. I have them in my little envelope here that I just took out of my folder. And I took these pages also out of the binder for the cutting guide. So this is Bloom, which is my very first set of So Simple Shapes. And what's fun about that is um, I was looking at the date because I looked on my blog because I found a, I wanted to find a picture for Cass to put in the slideshow. So you saw the bloom quilt in the slideshow at the beginning of this video. And I kind of wanted to see the date and it was in 2016, which means I designed them in 2015, which was, I mean, I mean, we're talking seven years ago. So uh, that's kind of cool. So you can see that this is set A because that's what I started out with. But um, what's kind of fun about this month is I wanted to let you know that some of them are just going to be like a single flower like this instead of all of them being a design that comes out the center. Like, let me grab these again. You know what I mean? Like a design that kind of blooms out of the center. Like these. I thought it would be really fun for to do flowers that are blooming from a stem as well. I really love how that looks inside the star. So we're gonna be doing that as well. And so here are the shapes that we need for that block right here for the tulip. And these are again, are all from Bloom. So A24 for the tulip, A12 for the center of the tulip. And we need one each of those. And then we need two A16 for the leaves. And then of course I've got my stems. So that's what we need for that block. And then for this block, I'll give you a little visual here just so that we'll put that book stand to use there. So we need A23 for the flower, one of those. We need A2, one of those for the large circle in the center. And then A1 for the smaller circle in the center. And then for these Leaves, we need four A13, okay? And then stems for those. 
So I went ahead and sewn all of the shapes except for the flowers themselves, meaning this flower and the tulip, because these happen to be the only two shapes that need to be clipped. After turning all of these other shapes, there's no inner curves or cleavage areas or Y areas in those, and so they're just easy sew and, you know, just stitch right on the line. So I thought we could just start by doing these, and again, just if you're new and you're just tuning in and you've never used my method before, this is my sewing interfacing, and I take the shape and trace right on it. Just trace around it with a thin line. I like to use a mechanical pencil. And then um, also, it's easy for me to see with a mechanical pencil, but also if you happen to draw onto these when you're tracing around, it's easy to just erase them. And then I just put it on the right side of the fabric and I just stitch directly on the lines. Okay, and then I'm just gonna sew over where I start. And so I just, let me pull this machine over just a little bit closer. So I just begin sewing in using a smaller stitch. If you're having um, problems with when you are shaping and um, you're poking a lot of holes and you feel like you're not pushing too hard, then I would definitely say shorten your stitch. And if you're really having a lot of problems, I mean, everybody does it differently. You can a lot of people, you know, maybe um, shape theirs a little bit um, stronger or have a little bit lighter touch. But if you feel like you don't have a light enough touch and you and you are poking a few holes here and there, I would just shorten the stitch and then maybe sew around the shape twice and so that you can just strengthen it a little bit. Okay, because I have to sew far away from these. I'm going to grab a pair of my readers so I can see what <laughs> see what I'm doing here. And so I like to use a, an open-toed foot or some kind of a foot, speaking of seeing what I'm doing, so that I can see the line that I'm sewing on right as I'm sewing. And so I don't have to worry about guessing if I'm on the line or not. And what I do is just slow down when I get to the curves. And I can go faster. And as I've said before, just like driving. I have this little scrap of fabric here that I always sew in between just to save thread and just to save time from having all those long threads to trim. Okay, so I started right here, and so I'm just going to over sew by about an inch or a half inch, and then I'm just going to sew right off of it, and just, here's my tulip piece right here, and I can just start that anywhere. I don't like to start on a point. I usually just start it anywhere until I get to the line, and then... first one off. So again, I'm kind of sewing um, far away, meaning, you know, my eyes are clear back here, my head's clear back here, but normally when I'm sewing, I am a little bit closer so I can see exactly what I'm doing. So I don't recommend sewing this far away. But I want you to be able to see what's happening. Okay, so then I just over sewed a little bit and I just sew right onto my scrap. So then I'll just grab some scissors and I will just cut past my sewing line an approximate quarter inch seam or smaller. And when I get to these points, 
I can trim a little bit closer, but I don't want to get real close to them. But, you know, you can kind of clip off those points a little bit to redu reduce some bulk. And so I'm just trimming around here. I'm going to do the same thing with this little aqua flower here. Now I've got with these um, two shapes, I have something fun to show you after I show you how to lay out these blocks, something that I'm that I've done before with these two shapes. So at the end of the video, I'm going to show you something else that I've done with that. Okay, so this I just discard. And then before I can turn these in order for them to lie flat, I need to clip all the way to the thread, not into the thread or past it, but just one clip. I don't need to make a bunch of clips or anything, just one clip because when we turn that, we want that to lie flat. And so these are typically in, in the applique world just called cleavage areas, okay? So that's what that looks like. And then in here, I've just got two of those that I need to clip. Anything that's an outer curve, you don't need to clip. It's not gonna hurt it if you clip it, certainly, but it's, you know, you don't need to, so I just don't, I don't do that. Okay, so then you can just kind of tear away your backing or use a seam ripper. When I said tear away, I meant pull away my backing, don't tear it. And pull it away so that it's not by my fabric so that I can just cut a little X in there. Again, pull away and then just make a little clip right there. And I always have my hand on, on the other side here, making sure that you know I'm not going to be cutting into my fabric or poking through my fabric. And I don't need a real big X or anything, just need something so that I can turn. And then what I'll do here is I just go ahead and turn one petal at a time and just kind of push out with my fingers as much as I can. These are a little bit easier because they're a larger shape so that I can you know get my fingers in there but when I can't get my fingers in there at this point, I use, I use this turner even to help me turn without shaping. So once they're turned like this, I keep my interfacing side to me and I will take this and just gently push out. And I like to keep this between my thumb and fingers here and that helps me to press them when I've, when I've, you know, shaped them the way that I want to. And so I'm just, this is the shaping part and this is important. It's important to have a good tool for this. And I really like this um, Clover point to point turner. I, I've tried many, many of them and new ones when they come out on the market and different things like that. But for some reason, I just really like this one the best. Okay, so when I get to that point, that's what it looks like. So I know that these are all pushed out, meaning I can see my stitching lines. So that's the shape that I sewed. And if I trace the shape correctly, and I sewed right on the line, then I'm gonna get this same shape right here. And that's the goal. So then I come over here and I like to just kind of set these really quickly with this with this uh, quick press. It's flat and because this is cotton it really helps set those. Then I'll bring it over here and I'll press and it doesn't matter if I iron back and forth a little bit but I don't you know because this um, kind of works as a stabilizer so that helps that. But I'll iron Get it nice and hot, and then I'll put these um, clappers by Riley Blake on there, and the wood will absorb the heat quicker, and that will make that lie flat. And so while that's happening, let's just hurry and shape this tulip, and we'll talk about points. So what I do with that is I just, again, use my finger and just push out what I can. And that's kind of what that looks like. 
and then I'm going to start right here because I'm going to I like to work with the points the last and I'm going to go around here and just push that down as soon as I see see those stitched lines you see that really helps to smooth that now when I get to these points I'll push out a little bit this is where you want to be careful and not really push hard but then I'd like to turn sideways and use that seam allowance bulk to kind of push out that point. This one doesn't have a real pointy point as much as the side ones do. And so I work with those a little bit more and I'm just kind of gently pushing on the seam allowance part to get it up there so that I'm not poking into the interfacing. And I'll make sure that this is just unfolded like that. That's what that looks like. And again, I just come over here and roll these edges. And I love the way how cotton just does that crease. I mean, you can see I've got creases in there already just from when I turned it. But now that I've pressed those edges down with the roller, I can take this. And now the iron will get all those little creases out. And even though I'm sliding back and forth, you can see that I'm still kind of going like this instead of holding my hand and going back and forth this way. I'm really trying to press it from the center out, if that makes sense. And then I just lay them on there and let them cool. That's what that looks like. Now, if we hadn't a clip there, these would not be able to lie flat. And so, all right, so now I'm going to take this background that I showed you here and I'll just let that cool for a second. Then I'm just going to lay out, you know, show you how I lay out the um, both of these blocks. On I just prepared one background. I won't glue it down. I'll just pin it down and um, show you how I do it and give you a little, a few little hints on that. And so I'll be back because I'm going to move all this stuff over to the work table. Okay, so... Here we are with the tulip pieces. Now, when I have a piece like this that is layered on top of this one, then a lot of times I'll just go ahead and glue that first. And so when I'm gluing, so I use this Sue glue, I usually just do a little drop like this at a time. A little dot, drop, whatever you want to call it. but. Basically, what I'm doing is taking place of a pin, and they're that far apart, and they're also about a quarter inch away from the edge because I don't want to get onto my edge so that I can applique that edge, and it's not really necessary, you know, to get it onto the edge. And so what I do here now is I'm just going to, this is going to hang over a little bit, and I'm just going to center it right like there, and I just thought it was, was cute to make that shape that way. I could obviously just have used that tulip, but I liked how using a different shape from the set on top of it just gave it a little bit of a different look. Okay. Now, because I'm going to, because I was, I only did one background, so I'm going to, I'm going to rub this glue off because I don't want it to glue real heavy on there because I'm going to remove these pieces after I pin them so that I can show you the second one. And so what I'm doing with this is I'm just gonna lay this here and I want the points, I'm gonna use these lines as my guide to center. So this is going to center here, but I want these points to come up from this line about a quarter of an inch that way. And then I cut from my spool, I cut a three inch long stem and then I pressed one end under. And then most of the time I'll just go ahead and put a little tiny dot of glue there and just hold that. I usually try to put the lid on my glue in between too so it doesn't dry out. Just hold that down so it kind of stays that way. And that's going to be the bottom. And then I will go ahead and pin that right along there or glue it first. I'm not going to glue this one because I'm going to use the same background. I just didn't get time to do two backgrounds and I thought, well, I've already done my blocks so I can just show you on one background. It's not that big of a deal. But let's see, on my old one, it's showing that it's about one and three quarter inches 
long. So I'll just take my ruler and pull my stem down to where it measures one and three quarter inches from the bottom of that tulip right there. And then if I'm worried about that, again, here's the six and a half inch trim it ruler that we're gonna use to trim it down. But I also always use it when I'm laying out my pieces and these lines right here on the ruler line up with the seams in the background. And I can see that I have this much left and this much left on my background after my block is trimmed and sewn into the star. This is where the seam allowance is. So I know I'm pretty good that way. And so the whole thing, just so you know, measures just a little, well, it's about five and a half inches right there. So then I'm like, okay, so that's good to go. So then I start putting my pins in and I just put in enough so that things won't shift. I don't need to put any here really, but I get, you know, it's not gonna hurt because these went all the way through. Put those there and put a pin here. Normally this would be glued down already. And then these I can lay however I want. I can lay them straight across like that. I can lay them so that they're slanted, which is what I did for this block right here. See, it's a little bit slanted, but there is room that you could put them straight across. And with leaves, I like to just put one pin first right there. And then I'll go ahead and when everything's pinned and looks good, I just do one more look over the top with the ruler just to make sure that I'm not gonna cut anything off and nothing's going into the blue area. And then I just go ahead, take this glue and I lift it up and do those little dots. Add a few more pins after I've glued and just let it dry, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And after the glue is dry, I just um, take the pins out and it's ready for applique. And then after I applique, either by machine or by hand, and again, I'll leave links here showing you how I hand applique and also how I machine applique, just so that you can, you know, decide how you wanna do it. But I have done videos here on my channel for both of those methods. And so I'll leave links for that. And then once it's all applique, then I'll just lay my trim it ruler up there, lining everything up and trim it down to six and a half inches. And then it's ready to sew into the center of the star. Okay, so before I go on to the next block, I need to let you know which fabric I have people asking me to tell them which, um, which of my fabric collections that I've used in each block. So these two are both from B Backgrounds. This is from Stitch, this is from Flea Market, and this is from Granny Chic, and then of course the stem is Bee Cross Stitch. And so that's those prints. And then in the star that I did, this is from Flea Market, and then this background print is not from Bee Backgrounds, it's from Bee Cross Stitch. Okay, so those are those fabric identifications. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick these pins back in this truck so I can show you the layout and give you the measurements and such of the next block. And again, this is what that block looks like right there. These are the pieces for it. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with, well, I'm gonna do the smaller one, that I did with the tulip. And that is, I'm going to put little dots of glue. Oops, I went a little too fast on that. Little dots of glue on that circle and center it on this one. Now, if you're ever wondering about centering, it's very easy to just take a ruler, that's a little less than a half inch on that side, and this is a half inch on this side, so that means I'm just gonna smoosh it over just a little bit, and that just kinda helps me to get that centered. And then, same thing, I'm just 
don't squeeze very hard. I just kind of let the glue kind of flow out on its own because you really just don't need much glue. This glue is water soluble if you get too much glue and you can remove it if it dries. You can pull it off gently and reposition if you need to. Okay, so now I've got that flower all ready to go. And then it can go there. I'm just gonna kind of sort of lay these in the corners where they're gonna go. I did mine with the points going in, but you could always change it up if you wanted to and make the points go out. So I cut four pieces, one and a half inches long. And I don't need, to, I didn't need to press any edges under for that. And so what I'm going to do with this is go ahead and center this using the lines here in the fabric and using these little um, cleavage areas right there. That's perfect to line those up. So you can just place a pin. Now I know that this block for sure is in the center because I have these lines on the background. And again, you could cut a piece of background like eight inches square and then just press it like diagonally in this way so that you have those crease lines. And I, I do that as well too, but I really want to do this series with these um, different backgrounds because I think it just adds a lot of personality and I like to do that to add dimension. And so then I'll, what I'll do here is go ahead and tuck these under and once again I have that seam to line things up. Now you're not going to have a lot of stem showing on these. It's not going to be very long but it's enough to you know, give you that fun. Oh, wait, I just look. Okay, I just realized something. Okay, let's look at this block. See how the cleavage areas are here where the stems come out? And this one, I twisted the flower differently. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to untwist it and go back the other way because I realized the reason I didn't do it this way is because I didn't feel like it gave enough room for my leaves. I wanted my leaves to come down into those areas. And so I'm going to go ahead and line up, still lining up the lines in these cleavage areas, but it's the diagonal lines. All right. How many of you guys caught that before I did? <laughs> All right. Now back to Back to that, see what I mean? Because you don't show much of that stem right there. That's what it would look like if you turn it around the other way with the points going out. I think it looks cute either way. So maybe for this layout, I'll just do it with the points out just so that you can see the difference. And that might help you decide on how you want it to do yours. But as I'm measuring these right here, I think I remember right, yeah, it was a half inch long is all that's showing from these stems, so not very much. Okay, so normally I'd be gluing these down here. And then I take my little ruler and I just lay it there a half inch and lay that down at the half inch mark right there. And that point goes on the line here. I'm going to eyeball it and then measure it. I've got to bring it down a little bit. Okay. Stick another pin in it there. Making sure these are on the center. So having a small ruler really comes in handy. I'm always using that and measuring tape. I always have them close by when I'm you know, laying out my blocks. Because once I figure out one and how I like it to go, then I wanna make sure that all the other ones measure the exact same. And it's super easy to do with these lines and backgrounds the way they are. 
Okay, so that's that block. Move those. Oh, sorry, drop my scissors. Okay, so that's what it looks like with the points going in, and that's what it looks like with the points going out. I think it's really cute either way. And then it's just time to put the glue and again trim it down. Let me bring it up closer a little bit just so that you can see what that looks like. Just needs to be glued. Applique. And oh, before I take these away again, let's talk about the fabric here. So both of these are B background. I know that this is a cross stitch, but I, I put a few of these in my B backgrounds before I did my whole collection of B cross stitch. So these are part of the B background in gray. And this is a B background. This aqua here is from Granny Chic. This green stripe is from Stitch. And both of these prints right here are from Farm Girl Vintage. And then this yellow print right here is from Stitch. And then this background here is actually a wide back. And um, that's that's from Granny Chic. That's my embroidery wide back from Granny Chic. But, you know, I like to cut up my wide backs. And speaking of that, I didn't talk about this. This is from B background, but this right here, this little baby chicks is actually a wide back as well. See the little green baby chicks. So that's all of that fabric. So that you can identify that, but, okay, so I told you that I was gonna show you what else you could do with these shapes. So clear back when I did uh, the Bloom Sew Along, which I still can't believe it's been that long. Thank you everybody for your support of my So Simple Shapes clear back six, seven years ago when I was doing them. So I want to show you that you can do patchwork ones you know what, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull this design board. Sis, will you take those pins out so I can use that design board so you guys can see this. But I wanted to show you that you can do patchwork and so simple shapes at the same time. And I did a workshop on this a long time ago and it was really fun. So first let's just talk about this shape, all right. So you could obviously do that with this right here. Of course, I went and turned that over because I normally have them glued and forgot that I didn't have it glued. Okay, so you can make your flower go up and down this way. You can do it sideways like this. You can do a small circle. You can do large circles. You can do stacked circles, you know, to, to change the look and whatever you wanna do. But what you do is you take three inch squares and sew them together, okay? And then you just take your traced, so simple shape, the same thing that you normally do when it's just for one solid piece of fabric, and you line up these cleavage areas on the seams. And if you use a three inch square, then you've got enough left over. Okay, there we go, right there. And then when I do this, you know, you see me not usually pin when I do this, but because I'm trying to line these up, I will stick a couple of pins in. And then I just go ahead and sew like that, clip when I turn and they end up like this. And it looks really fancy and really hard and it just, it wasn't at all. But I would press my seams open so that they lie flat. And so that's one way that you could do, make that patchwork. And then the tulips, I've done the same thing in two different ways right here. So here's your, here's your piece right here. But um, the tulip so simple shape, Cash, you wanna hand me the tulip so simple shape right there? There you go. Let me show you the lines on here. When I designed this, I designed these to be one inches apart right here so that you could do this very thing. Because what you do is you're gonna use one and a half inch strips for wide and four inches tall, four or four and a half inches tall for these two. And then for the two outside ones, you're gonna cut them two inches wide. You need just a little bit more room. And then that ends up looking like that. And if you want to 
it to look like this, you will cut this two and a half inches wide and then these two, two inches wide. And so this is what that looks like. So I've got a couple here all ready to go with just the one and a half. And what you do there, same thing, you just line it up with these little cleavage areas right here on the seams and the point on that seam. So it's a little bit easier to see there. And just pin it and sew around and turn it this way. And that's really fun to get little patchwork tulips, little patchwork flowers, and different things that I've done um, before with just single flowers and patchwork flowers is, you know, project bags. I've shown you this, this before that I did a tutorial on many years ago on my blog. I did the small and then I just have a larger one. But look how, you know, just one little flower adds a lot to a bag. Now, this one I did a long time ago, and I just took background squares that are one and a half inch from my stash, sewed them together to create this interesting background, and then I just used my stash to do scrap fabrics and make that and frame it. And this is in a cute little five by seven frame, see? It's just easy to pop out, and that makes it a fun little thing that's sitting here on my, uh, aqua sewing cover here. This one I did a long time ago and this is um, another example of a patchwork flower that you can do. This one I didn't even applique down. I thought it would be really fun to just use burlap and I just glued it down and kept it that way because it's just a picture frame. It doesn't really need to be appliqued. And so you could easily do that with these patchwork flowers in here. And then, you know, you just grab circles, what you want. You grab a couple of leaves. You could do two sets of leaves on this, depending on how large your frame is. But it's really fun. I remember I got this frame on clearance. I think it was at Joann's, actually, like years ago. And I I don't know why I remember getting it, because, but I loved it. And I think I paid like $1.99 or something for it. And when I bought it, I saw in my mind... Uh, a little so simple shape patchwork flower in there and so you can just be creative with these different things and here's a bigger project bag that my friend Annette hi Annette made for me using my flea market flower now that's made with my pie ruler but it's the same thing and then these are shapes as well but you can do piecing and applique at the same time and I don't know. I just, that's why I'm having fun with this series. And I hope you guys are having fun with this series because there's so many different things that you can do with these shapes. And I want you to be able to, you know, once that you've purchased them and you've used them and we've done the sew along and we've made the quilt and we've had fun, I don't want you to be able to just um, not be able to use them anymore. I want you to pull them out and do some fun little gifts. These would be fun little friend gifts, Mother's Day gifts. And again, big project bags, little project bags, um, patchwork or just solid, and just a few little bits of fabric and shapes can really make some fun projects. So I hope that you've enjoyed today's episode. Number two, next month, of course, I'll be back on the third Friday of every month. And that is after the third Wednesday of every month when Riley Blake puts out their newsletter and they will tell you what so simple shapes I'm using and things like that uh, for the next set. And I've had fun today. Thanks for joining me in my sewing room and I'll chat with you later.